Well, good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Steve Arderwater. I'm the executive member for the Environment and Transformation at West Berkshire Council. Uh, thank you very much for joining us uh, tonight. Um, myself and our waste manager, Kofi Adugamfi, are going to be talking about waste and recycling. And um, we know we've got plenty of questions already from you. Um, and we're looking forward to a, to a really interesting session. Um, so I'll hand over now to Kofi, who will give a quick overview presentation uh, of what's going on. And then we will again handle your questions. Over to you, Kofi. Thank you, Steve. Um, so before we take questions, we just thought it would be beneficial to give a flavor of the work we do and to highlight some of the um, initiatives that we are currently implementing across the district. So this first slide is giving a snapshot of the various services and facilities that uh, we have in this district. Um, as some of you may know, we have the privilege of being a unitary authority, which means we combine both the waste collection authority function with the waste disposal authority function. That means we collect waste from approximately 70,000 properties in the district. Um, we have two household waste recycling centers located in um, Newbury and also Padworth Lane near Redden. To complement these big recycling centers, we have a network of eight mini recycling centers, which are conveniently positioned at various uh, points across the district. And often you find that these are near either train stations or shopping centers so that people can build it into their regular commutes and errands. As said before, um, as part of our statutory duty, we treat the waste that we collect, recycle what is recyclable, and find disposal routes for those that cannot be um, effectively recycled. And normally, we use predominantly energy from waste facilities to burn and generate energy on the back of the process. And for the very small amounts that we cannot burn, we send to landfill for disposal. We also working with our, our contractor, do litter picking to ensure that our streets and uh, roadsides are kept as clean as practicable. And as mentioned, uh, street cleansing you have there. We have a duty also to remove abandoned vehicles uh, on roads for which we are responsible. Um, we also take seriously our duty to enforce against waste crime, such as fly tipping and littering. And finally, for eligible residents, we do clinical waste uh, collections. So I'm talking about things like um, shops and needles. So this slide is just to give uh, an idea of the amount of waste we handle each year and the way it is apportioned to various uh, routes. Um, we collect just shy of 75,000 tons of waste each year. And these are statistics from last year, 2021, 20, 22. Of all the waste that we collect, nearly half of this is recycled. And also for the recycled fraction, this breaks down into approximately half and half. Uh, one half being dry materials, which we send for uh, recycling or reuse, and the other half being the organic materials that we compost at our investing composting facility. Then just under 45, sorry, 44% was sent to energy from waste facilities, and a small amount was then sent to landfill. One figure I'd want to bring your attention to is the fact that our compositional analysis of the, the waste bin, the black general waste bin, shows that about 45% of the waste people throw away could be recycled. And more significantly, a quarter plus of the waste people throw away is comprised food waste. That brings us conveniently onto the next slide which is uh, introducing a new service that the council is very proud of uh, to be able to introduce at the end of this month. And this service will be available to all households 
irrespective of where they live. So we'll start at the end of this month with all single occupancy properties, curbside properties, and then about a month later, all flats and communal dwellings will be provided with this service. Um, so as uh, many of you that test to, we are currently in the process of delivering the containers, the caddies. Um, if you live in the curbside property, you'd have had a pair, a smaller caddy for inside your kitchen and a larger one that you present for collection each week. And the purple image shows the large wheel bin, which will be used in shared uh, bins for those who live in communal dwellings. One thing we are looking forward to is that this service will help us to significantly improve our recycling performance from where it is currently to, to near 60%. And uh, this is an image of one of our brand new food waste trucks, which have just arrived and have been uh, covered in very um, colorful and impactful livery. And uh, we're also very happy to announce that we um, worked with local primary school children. We opened up a competition to them to help us come up with names for our eight food waste trucks. And our young people did not disappoint. Um, so we are yet to do the full press release on that. But if you are in this um, session, um, we are happy to share the names that were successful with you. And as you can see on the screen, this uh, example of the vehicle has already had its name uh, printed on it. This is Betty Banana. Um, so look out for them as and when they get into service. And we believe that by involving primary school children, we are engaging a very important demographic who would go home and talk to, to their parents and adults about this new service and also encourage them on a day-to-day -day basis to use the service that we are providing. In recent times, we've also expanded uh, the opportunities we give to our residents to recycle. So um, to add to the existing mini recycling center uh, network, uh, this summer we opened two new ones, one in Thiel and the other is Gaston. We're currently um, exploring the possibility of introducing even one, one feather in the east of the district. And soon as the, our work bears fruit, we will announce uh, to residents so they can avail themselves of their facility. Um, this week, we are also very pleased to be able to launch a paint reuse scheme at both of our recycling centers. And the concept is simple. If you've got paints that you have partly used or you haven't opened the, the lid at all, uh, you can take it to one of our recycling centers, present it to a site staff who would inspect for suitability, and then put it as part of the stock we have. And other members of our this, uh, residents can go and inspect. If they find it of interest, they can take any can or, or color of their choice and sign a disclaimer and go to use those paints in a meaningful way. This will help us and our contractor to work with residents to minimize paint waste and also at a time uh, where uh, resources are quite scarce, people can make use of this paint without needing to buy uh, new paints from the shops. This is an image, an example of how the shelving at our Newtown Road HWRC is currently looking. And as you can see, we already have a very healthy stock of paint ready for you. So if you're interested or you know someone who might benefit from this service, they just need to book uh, to visit in the usual way and then follow the right processes and, and have what they need. Um, finally, I just wanted to, uh, we wanted to flag uh, some of the community engagement things we do. Needless to say, we are very busy frontline service but whenever we have the opportunity to do more in our community, we take those opportunities. So to the left of your screen, uh, you can see uh, we recently hosted a special education needs pupil uh, who had expressed interest in getting some 
um, shadowing and work experience in our area. So we work with our contractor to give them a very good exposure to what we do. So here, um, the young gentleman is uh, working with one of our uh, waste officers to uh, see an abandoned vehicle and they were talked through the process as to how to handle such a scenario. And uh, this gentleman really enjoyed the experience with us. And hopefully whatever they do in their future, this can be a transferable and beneficial experience for them. To the right, you can see a very happy um, young boy um, who, as I, as I understand, so loves the waste um, collection operatives that um, he stands by his window every collection day to give them a cheerful wave. So on his uh, fourth birthday, which, which was a few weeks ago, our contractor organized a surprise where they took a truck uh, to uh, wish him a very happy birthday. And in times like this, we, we are very happy if we can bring a cheer to an individual or a household. Uh, on this juncture, I'd want to thank you all for listening and uh, I'll invite questions, which uh, myself and Steve will be happy to address. Thank you very much again. Okay, um, well, uh, thank you for that, Kofi. Um, those are, again, really informative and there's, there's lots of material there and, and we, we may show some of those slides in, in a bit if it, uh, if it becomes helpful. Um, so we'll, we'll take it in turns to take these. And, and the first question has already come from John. Um, asking why aluminium trays are not included in the recyclable material. Um, so my uh, response to this, and, and Kofi, correct me here, is that the, the quality of aluminium used in things like trays and for um, uh, Christmas, Christmas pies and the like, that is much lower quality than you get in a can. Um, now, aluminium is actually the best material for recycling. It could be infinitely recycled and, and commands a very high price because it is good quality stuff. Um, if we were to collect aluminium uh, trays and foil and the like, then that would reduce the quality of that material and manufacturers wouldn't be able to make it directly back into new drinks, cans and the like. So that is why we do not uh, include, uh, sadly, uh, lower grade aluminium. Uh, have I got that right, Kofi? And is there anything you want to add? Yes, indeed, Steve. Uh, thank you. And also to add to that, um, we, we continue to look for other opportunities to help people recycle things like aluminum trays. So um, one area we're looking at potentially is to uh, see if something can be done away from the curbside, um, such as at our mini recycling centers, um, as soon as the right opportunity presents and we can finalize the options we will uh, let our residents know. But thank you again for asking. Um, so do, do you want to take the next one, Kofi, about plastic food trays? Yes, indeed. Um, so um, John asks again whether plastic food trays are recyclable, and if not, will they be soon? Um, so the, the question um, is it, linked to the aluminum one. Um, it can be recycled, but the quality is of a lower uh, specification than the plastic bottles that we collect from the curbside. Uh, so again, what we've done is to make sure that our curbside services are complementary to the services that we provide away from the curbside. And to that end, we have made sure that um, six of our mini recycling centers can now take plastic post tops and trays for recycling. These services are proving to be immensely popular. Residents are using them in big numbers. Uh, so we'll continue to expand the away from curbside solutions. But again, uh, emerging government proposals hopefully will make more funding available to local authorities like us in, in the near future. And when we get to that point, we will look at the possibility to do even more at the cap site. Uh, thanks, Kofi. Um, so I'll take the next one. Uh, again, th these are all from John. And John's final question is about how are items sorted and should plastic bottles have their tops removed and put in general waste? 
so th this uh, this question has been going on a while. We, we perhaps we should uh, update our, our our guidance and so forth. But um, basically, um, please do um, include uh, the tops to bottles, but critically, make sure they're not tightly on the bottle. Uh, the reason is that, that as, as everybody knows, plastic is very light, and at our recycling centre at Padworth, uh, we crush uh, a large volume of uh, plastic and compress it into a great big uh, bale, uh, about a metre cubed. And if there are full plastic bottles, the risk is that these can explode and disrupt and, and, and jiggle around the contents. So the best of all, please, is, is do include uh, plastic pot bottle tops, but make sure they're not tightly uh, on the bottle. Um, so trusting that's good. And thank you for those questions, John. The next and one. Just and to add, if I may quickly, Steve, um, the latest guidance, as you alluded to, we uh, amend it from time to time based on what the market and our contractor are telling us. And the latest guidance for plastic bottle is uh, please take them off the top of the bottle, but keep them the lids separate in the same container because they both can be recycled but we just don't want it on top because it can expand in heat and in a bill sometimes it can explode and then the bill could be unstable uh, so that's just a small addition there thank you okay. um so the next question then is from uh, Simon. Um, Simon asks, uh, dog, he says, dog poo bins never seem to get emptied at the same time as normal waste bins in local areas. Um, so um, absolutely, Simon, that's a very good, uh, very good point and very good question. Uh, the reason is we have a different contract for uh, dog waste um, uh, clearing and replacing, and that is handled by a different contractor who also does the grass cutting uh, around the, the district. And, and you may have seen vans for our contractor, um, Continental Landscapes, who handle both of those aspects. So uh, the reason is we have two different services and um, the, again, the countryside service, which uh, handles grass cutting, also does dog poo bins as the two uh, are generally quite close together. I hope that makes sense. Um, Kofi, do you want to take yeah. the next one from Michelle? Thank you. So Michelle asks, are there any plans to start to collect additional plastics at the curbside? Um, as as um, explained before, um, we are on the lookout always for new opportunities to collect even more materials and help our residents to recycle a greater range of materials. One thing I will say is that the government is um, proposing some emergent measures around the extended producer responsibility scheme for packaging waste. When these measures come online, the expectation is that they will put a greater responsibility on manufacturers who put these materials on the market to put in um, more finances to help local authorities like us to uh, handle such waste. And, and so, just to say, uh, please bear with us, whilst the government hasn't finalized its um, solutions and with, whilst the funding opportunities haven't been clarified, we don't want to do any significant changes. And what we're doing is making incremental changes away from the curbside. But as and when the funding comes through and the market exists, we will expand our curbside opportunities. Yeah, uh, thank you, Kofi. And again, I'll, I'll chip in at this point. Um, so one, uh, while it is moving quite slowly, one encouraging thing that I've seen is that the market for recyclable materials is gradually improving in the UK. And behind all of the activities that, that we and our contractor Veolia do, um, the disposal and the recycling of things means that um, materials, in particular in this case, as you, as you were asking, Michelle, plastics, need to find someone who can turn that waste plastic into something useful and something new and perhaps 10 15 years ago there, there were very few things you could you could find park benches made out of recycled plastic and maybe pencils and little else and gradually because of these government signals um more and more firms are are getting into the market we hope that stays uh, it's great to see that it does and again as uh, building on what kofi said that that will open up more opportunities to recycle more things as the uh, the market improves Thank you, Steve. 
The next one is from Kate. Kate asks, um, in fact, she has two questions, but the first one says, um, inverted commas, so they are quoting our guidance, which says, please do not put bones from red meat, oils, liquids, and fats into your caddy. And the question is this, um, what about food that's been cooked with oil and butter? Um, the response to, to you, Kate, is that we totally would accept food that has been cooked with oil and butter. What the guidance is discouraging is pouring maybe half a, a bottle of oil into the food waste container, uh, which may not be conducive to the composting process that we use. But certainly, uh, any food that has been cooked with oil and butter, please feel free to put in your food waste caddy. The second one says uh, white papier mache food containers sometimes used for takeaways. Are these properly compostable and could these be recycled with cardboard? Uh, so again, thank you for your question. Um, this one ha has an, a depends answer uh, in the sense that um, not all of those uh, food waste uh, disposable containers are effectively recyclable. So if you want to put in for a uh, composting, make sure it has the uh, composting standard. I will not um, mention the specification, but uh, please check that it is effectively compostable. We have more information in our uh, frequently asked questions, which we'll be happy to share with you separately and also put on social media. But um, where it does not meet that standard, please do not put in for recycling because it will constitute uh, contamination. Thank you. Um, so the next one, and, and again, thank, thanks for, for all these, Kate, um, is about uh, plastic bags that are made from potato starch. Um, are these truly compostable? Um, and as far as I know, and please correct me, Kofi, yes, they are. And again, this is another really interesting uh, thing to see how um, packaging manufacturers driven by the supermarkets and driven by regulation are making more things, uh, more packaging, uh, which can really absolutely be, be composted. Now these bags, um, they, they certainly can be composted at home. They might take a bit longer than a cabbage leaf uh, so forth. Um, so using our, our new, either our new food waste service or, or the, the garden waste service, which we've been recycling food for quite a while, that, that process at, at Padworth uh, um, is, is a lot more intense, is a lot faster than your, your home compost bin. Um, so both will work, um, but yes, uh, potato starch and anything made from, which is which is shown as made from um, starches, uh, should be entirely compostable. So please use them. Thank you. Thank you. Next uh, sub question is asking. Um, it says, uh, "Sorry, it might be a bit off topic, but what happens to recycled clothes, textiles that are, that aren't quite good enough for charity shops?" What happens normally for those that are not uh, wearable is they, they have a few rules, including sometimes they are shredded and um, presented as racks to uh, places like garages who need lots of racks to mop up oil or clean vehicles. Uh, so that's one route. Sometimes the uh, unusable textiles are sent to energy from waste facilities uh, for incineration and beneficially it produces energy on the back end. Okay. Um, thank you, Kofi. Um, so next we've got a question from Karen. Um, once collected, where are West Berkshire recycling materials sent to and how can you be sure they are recycled properly? Uh, so thank you, Karen. That's a, that's a really good question. Um, there's a very complex industry or, or firms which specialise in different materials. Um, we have, and I've, I've seen a very impressive, something that looks almost like a London tube map of roots or, or, and particular sites and plants, which particular materials are taken to from our uh, recycling process. Um, so it depends on material is the first answer. Some are, again, as we've been talking about, if they're compostable, um, that they are recycled locally uh, within the district. And part of the benefit there is that uh, we don't need to, to truck them around the, the country. There are no, no movement costs 
um, once uh, once organic, once food waste has got to Padworth. Um, and for things like plastics, which, as you may know, are very varied right now, there are different types of plastics. Uh, those are sent to various plants, almost all of them actually now within the UK, uh, and a few uh, are, are sent to more specialist plants in Belgium and Germany. Um, there was, as, as you may be aware, there was quite a lot of scandal um, a few years ago of of um, plastic recycling in particular, ending up in uh, Eastern Europe and Southeast Asia and in really, really bad conditions. And that is something we and our partner Violia have been very careful uh, to avoid. Um, this comes back to uh, the, the many people ask about uh, why, can't, why can't I have a single mixed recycling bin? Um, and one of the one of the responses, one of the reasons for that is that by asking you, the residents, to do quite a lot of the sorting, we ask you to, to put different things in your different boxes and bags, um, we and Veolia can be much more confident we can route things to the right place. So in summary, um, most of the materials, the great majority of materials, are recycled properly uh, within the UK. Uh, we and Veolia are very careful about our, uh, our supply chain, this respect, and um, we and they audit uh, where things go to to make sure that there is genuine recycling. Thank you. Want to add to that, Kofi? Or... No, you've covered and it perfectly. <laughs> Thank you. So, next question uh, is from Christine. Christine wants to know whether we'll be taking away the existing green waste garden bin um, if they don't need it once the food waste service commences. The answer there is um, we currently, because we are implementing a major new service, our resources will be fully spread and we don't have any spare resource capacity to be taking away the uh, green bins at the same time that people don't need. So what we are asking people is please bear with us. And we've suggested other uses that people can put those bins to in their homes. Examples include using them as water baths or storage for your uh, locks at home. Alternatively, you can even use it as your uh, improvised home composter. Uh, so please um, use them at home and, and put them to good use uh, for the time being. And uh, yeah, thank you for bearing with us on this. Thank you, Kofi. Um, and next we have a question from Amber. Um, I'll paraphrase because uh, it, 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 it's, it's a fairly long question, but it's basically Amber was saying uh, that she, she noticed the recycling team pouring the green tubs and bags into green waste bins. Um, and I know the food is separated in, um, in, from the coming weeks uh, before taking the waste to the lorry to be emptied. Is this standard practice? And um, does this imply we could have mixed recycling soon? Um, if not, can this be looked into? Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll tackle those uh, first points and then there's a final one about litter and, and tubs and bags. So um, again, the, 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 the crews do mix uh, food waste and garden waste into the same container. And in fact, they, they help each other um, by having a fairly wet uh, mixture of what we produce at home that balances out the very dry uh, waste which comes from hedges and, and, and the like from gardens. And, and again, at Padworth, the two are blended together to get the right consistency for, for composting. Um, it is done deliberately by the crews. Uh, they will work in different ways, but please be assured that we do take care of both uh, green and garden waste. Um, I, I, in my previous answer, I, I did say about mixed recycling, in other words, one big bin for everything. I'm afraid that, that our situation really is that that would not be suitable for us. Um, so obviously anything can happen, it may happen in the future, but right now, certainly for the next couple of years, um, we do need to stay with our current arrangement, which may change, but roughly around asking residents to separate uh, recycling at the curbside. Um, and finally, you, you, you make a very good point there, Amber, about uh, litter created by tubs and bags, and, and absolutely, they're, they're, uh, it, particularly when it's a windy day, we, we, it's all very frustrating to have things blowing around. So um, uh, other than saying we, we, we all can and I hope will uh, sort of do our best and, and for example, put, put something on top of the, the, uh, the bottles, the green bag, uh, and, and trying to avoid things blowing around, uh, just be as careful as you can, as, as indeed the crews are. And uh, indeed, it would be good if we had a, a better solution. 
I don't know if you want to add to that at all, Kofi, in terms of what's possible in the coming few months. Yes, indeed, that, that's very well said. Thank you, Steve. Um, yeah, just to echo what you're saying about um, the father in the future, they, on the back of emerging government requirements, they may uh, specify the types of rece receptacles that they endorse, and equally, they may make funding available to us. At that time, we will do a full review of our receptacles to see if it's working well, and if not, what changes could be beneficial. But one thing I'll say on the positive note is that in the imagined future, the government is putting a greater emphasis on the quality of recycling and not just the quantity recycled. That means they will be requiring councils to separate the dry materials even more at the curbside. This makes our approach one of the more compliant ones across the country as compared to other councils who may use one big wheel bin to mix all the dry recycling. Such authorities will very soon fall foul of government's requirements. So we are doing very well. We just need to keep an eye on the potential for littering. Do you want to take the, the next one, Kofi, uh, from John? Yes, so John is asking, lots of plastic packaging bags say do not recycle. Others say recycle at larger supermarkets. Are all these actually recyclable? The short answer is no. Um, a lot of these materials um, have the label can be recycled and, and various permutations thereof. Uh, but often the market doesn't yet exist in the UK for them to be effectively recycled. And that is what sometimes presents problems for some authorities who have been collecting all grades of plastic materials at the curbside, only for many of this fraction to be exported overseas. So our uh, approach, whilst uh, it may cause a little bit of frustration for those who want to see everything recycled at the curbside, is actually the more prudent one because we are keeping our eyes on quality and we only collect materials for which we can be sure will be effectively recycled at accredited facilities. Thank you. Thank you, Kofi. Um, so the next question is from Richard, uh, who asks, why are we still required to book a slot at the recycling centre? Apart from being rather annoying, it seems a big waste of resources to have someone at the entrance checking all the cars in. Uh, so thank you for your question, Richard. Um, in general, uh, we, we have found, we, we have uh, asked uh, users of the uh, HWRCs and residents uh, for their views uh, several times on this. And in general, I have to say, most people like having the recycling, uh, the, sorry, the booking system for, for booking a slot. Um, there are several benefits here. Uh, one is uh, it avoids the risk of, of a great big queue, and particularly uh, if you know the Newtown Road Recycling Centre with the, the big long um, lane leading up from the Swan Roundabout. Uh, we used to have at peak times, let's say at weekends, big long queues of people who all wanted to, to get in and, and do their recycling at the same time. By having a booking system, it evens out that demand. Um, and uh, yes, I, I, I appreciate it is, it is annoying to have to, to book a slot, but it does mean that uh, A, you will get your re own recycling done much more quickly though, than you might have done if there was a queue. Um, you, will, you will spread out the load across the day. And as a slightly more subtle uh, benefit of this is um, it, it encourages uh, everybody to make fewer journeys to the recycling center with large, which more um, more load in your in your vehicle. Um, it is it is actually beneficial to us and to Veolia to have someone doing that check in just to make sure the system works well. And I absolutely appreciate um, none of us like hassle. I certainly don't. But it is um, it is by and large the the, the right thing to do and the, the best uh, for everybody. Um, yes, over to you, Kofi. For the next one. Jenny starts with a compliment. Thank you, Jenny. She says, Westbox does a good job recycling at curbside. 
Her question is, could you work towards getting people to put more of the correct items in the curbside containers, like not putting in taps, pots, and trays in the bottle bag? A very good point made there, Jenny. Um, we will continue to uh, work with our residents through communications campaigns to ensure they are working with us to recycle better and minimizing contamination. Okay, uh, thank you, Kofi. Um, the next uh, question is from Nicola. Why do we not have a full-size bin for recycling, um, as is the case in, uh, in Oxfordshire? Um, the current various tubs and bags are insufficient. Recycling ends up damp and blows all over the place in bad weather. It's difficult for weak and elderly to lift heavy tubs and it's easier to wheel. And it's a silly system that doesn't help aid the need for re easy recycling. Uh, so thank you again, Nicola. Um, you, you make some very good points there. Um, it would be lovely in terms of convenience if we did have one great big bin and you could just do it. Um, however, again, as, as we've mentioned, firstly, our district is, is different. Every, every district is different. Uh, the government is actually encouraging more curbside sorting, um, which uh, our tubs and bag uh, system asks for and encourages you to do. Um, and, and indeed, the, the all-in-one bin, while it may be convenient for the, um, for the householder at times, and, and I do take your point about elderly people and, and lifting things, um, but it is, it is the better approach in terms of making sure that more material can get sorted better. So uh, I understand your point. And again, as, as, as I've said previously, um, when, when the weather's windy, um, absolutely, it's, it's not great having that bag. And, and I would ask you and, and other residents to, to see if you can please just put another object on top of the bag to stop things blowing out of it. Um, damp in the cardboard, yes, that's a fair point. Um, but again, our, our recycling market, we're quite fortunate here that almost all of our cardboard uh, gets recycled within the district. It goes back towards Thatcham, where, as you may know, the, there are big uh, packaging businesses. So the, the amount of damp in cardboard actually isn't too important for us. Uh, but yes, it, it, it's, it's impossible to get the right balance. Um, what we have is, is, is good for us, and I'm sorry for the, uh, the inconvenience. Thank you, Steve. And just a small note to add that um, we do provide an assisted collection service for a very small uh, percentage of our residents who have um, impairment or who are frail. So um, just to say, we, we do not leave anyone out of our service. So for people who are eligible for such assistance, we have an assessment process that we take them through and their waste is then uh, collected from just outside their properties by waste operatives. Um, just to move to the next question, Denise asks, can food waste be placed into the caddies without a liner? Absolutely, yes. Um, you can put your food waste loose into the caddies if you run out of liners or if you just want to use that option yeah so as long as you're happy to uh clean your caddy after use we totally embrace that thank you kofi so uh next we have uh, two questions from sarah in fact no we've got lots of questions from sarah i'll ask the, i'll ask them the the first one and then hand over to you kofi for the, the the next one so sarah's first question is please can we have a really comprehensive list of household waste items with ticks or crosses against them to inform us fully of what can be recycled and where. The current list is not at all comprehensive and leads to wish cycling. I must say, I do like that word wish cycling. And yes, we need to, we need to use that one rather more. So thank you for that uh, comment, Sarah, and, and um, use of the word wish cycling. Um, a very good point. Uh, we do have a list uh, in particular against our um, MW uh, mini waste recycling centres, as, as Kofi mentioned in his presentation, um, but it's always good to keep that updated and review it and maybe put it in different places. So um, I'm, I'm sure Kofi and his team who are listening uh, with great interest to this, they'll make a note to update the list uh, where we need to, to be a bit more comprehensive. Um, so yeah, again, thank you, Sarah. We'll, we'll take that one in hand and, and we'll uh, improve things. Over to the next one, Kofi. The next one is uh, 
a really um, important point. Um, they are asking if we can put more videos and explanations about our various recycling processes on our website and to explain fully what happens to our waste. The answer is yes, um, we have started, we have some helpful information on our website, but we recognize that we can do even more uh, by showing exactly what happens to our waste and encouraging more people to recycle. So we'll take this away and come up with more uh, innovative ways of engaging with residents. And I know Ellie and Daniel, especially in my team, are fantastic at doing this. And in a short while, I know they will put out videos and helpful explainers. So look out for this on our website in the coming future. Thank you. Thank you, Kofi. Right, I'll aim to answer um, the, the uh, Sarah's uh, last three questions altogether, the, the, the shortened first two. So firstly, can we still put food waste in our large gar green garden waste bin? And the answer is uh, yes. And um, I, in answer to, to a couple of previous comments about the number of bins that have, be, have to be taken out, I, I can fully see, and, and I may well do this myself, is that when there is a garden waste uh, week, uh, and I'm a garden waste subscriber, I will probably put my food waste in, in the, the, that uh, on the green waste uh, week. And so I, I don't have the, the additional uh, food waste bin, and I'll only use a food waste bin on black bin weeks. Uh, then Sarah asks, uh, what about solid fat, which isn't not mentioned on your list? And I'll go out on a limb here, and I believe, yes, you can. I'm sure Kofi will correct me if I'm wrong here. And finally, what defines a large, as in no large red meat bones? Um, I don't want to put a, a length in millimetres against this or a weight, but I would just send, suggest um, typically um, bones of, of beef or pork um, or, or lamb, which are, 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 are leg bones of some sort, are definitely in the no large red meat bones category. There's probably a, a middle bit in the middle there, but maybe err on the size of uh, the side of caution. And if, if it comes from a, a red meat animal, uh, don't put it in. Uh, chicken bones, though, for example, they compost down really nicely, so they're fine. Thank you, Steve. Just to add to one of your previous responses, um, we, we will be encouraging residents as much as practicable uh, to be using the food waste caddies uh, for their food waste, even where they have a garden waste uh, subscription, um, mainly because the when the service starts, there'll be the opportunity to use the garden waste trucks even more efficiently. So there, there is unlikely to be the same capacity for collecting the same tonnage of garden waste because at this time, because we do not know who will present only food waste on the garden waste days, the trucks have been driving along every single street and lane in the district. And sometimes it's just wasted fuel and journeys. So when this new service comes online at the end of the month, the garden waste trucks will only go to garden waste customers' addresses, whilst the food waste yeah. trucks will go everywhere else. So where people continue to put food waste in their garden waste bin, we may find that the available resources dedicated to garden waste may not be sufficient anymore. So please continue to separate out and use the food waste as much as possible without uh, mixing in with your garden waste. Um, I hope that is helpful. Thank you. Um, next question is from David. Uh, the fact that everyone coming from Newbury has to drive down to the roundabout to get to the recycling center adds hundreds of miles extra a week with all the extra pollution. Um, so to paraphrase, uh, David has concerns about all the additional traffic and queuing, what that could do to the local traffic flows, frustration for other uh, drivers who are going on their own business and are not going to the recycling center. And all this, if I may say so, is excellent validation of our continued use of the booking system. That is partly what it was introduced to mitigate. So thank you, um, David, for um, indirectly endorsing our use of the booking system. 
And everyone who's gone by recently can attest to the fact that the traffic situation is so much better than it has been in the past when we did not have a booking system. Um, thank you, Kofi. Um, so then we have a, uh, a question from Alona. Uh, do you have a central database of all recycling points, including third party ones you don't manage? For example, TerraCycle collection points, water filters, food pouches, hangers, and etc. Um, and Alona uh, has offered uh, to work with our team to create a list and regularly update it. Uh, thank you very much for that, Alona. And um, it would be great to have this easily accessible for residents and encourage further recycling. Um, and finally, are there any plans to introduce recycling bins across our residential areas and parks? There are hardly any that we see around. Um, so and in, in terms of your first point, uh, Alona, thank you very much. And that's a really, really good offer. And uh, perhaps if um, via Ellie, who's coordinating this behind the scenes, we can uh, you can take that up with her offline. That, that's, a, that's a great suggestion. Um, I'm personally aware absolutely of the, the TerraCycle, which is a great little organization um, who do all sorts of recycling operations that we don't. And um, they are already uh, very active online on Facebook. And, and again, there are many other organizations. Um, and and your, your offer to, to keep the list updated is great because I, I do know that while the supermarkets at the minute have been very good for example, in recycling batteries and the like, uh, that what they do recycle and don't does change from time to time. But again, thank you very much. Um, and your final point, are there any plans to introduce across our areas and parks? Uh, this touches on the, the, the point about uh, dog waste bins, which I, I mentioned earlier. Um, to be honest, in particular, in, in, in terms of outside community areas, I, I would hope that we wouldn't have any more. And, and the reason is that I think we as we as individuals and residents need to take more responsibility for taking things home. Um, and while bins in, in high streets and in our shopping areas, and we do have a few uh, dog waste bins, for example, around uh, Green and Common, um, I, I, I do hope that we as we collectively can become a bit more conscientious about disposing of our, of our waste at, at home. Uh, the more bins there are, the more, more chance things get just left around and people get used to um uh, the convenience culture of of, of leaving things and, and again I, I would hope that we're all comfortable um just taking care of our own waste at, at home um so kofi over to you from mr giles yes indeed this question comes from my dear friend uh, mr chris giles um hello chris if you are uh, watching us tonight he asks um he recently purchased something from amazon and it came in a large box full of paper to protect it. Um, Chris says he folded it along with the box and his concern is that not every resident in the district is as conscientious in presenting their waste in the right way for collection. I would say yes, indeed, fully agreed. Um, thank you for, for how much you care about this matter and for your your work in the community to keep things clean and for recycling to be optimized so this is a plug and a, a plea to all our residents to be like chris uh, please present your waste in the right way to help our operatives uh, collect it in in the safest and most productive manner and also uh, minimize uh, contamination put the right things in the right containers but um very happy to note that the vast majority of our residents are conscientious recyclers, and we will continue to be thankful to you for, for your efforts in this area, even as we look to hit 60% recycling and beyond. Excellent. Uh, thank you, Kofi. Um, so Daniel uh, in Kofi's team has, has just uh, reminded us, uh, prompted in, in when I when I answer to Alona's uh, comment about uh, a consolidated list. Um, and thank you again, Alona, for that. But Daniel has just uh, reminded me that there is a, a very good website called Recycle Now, uh, as the all one word R E C Y C L E N O W dot com, and that lists uh, lots of locations. Um, regardless of whether they're from us, uh, us West Berkshire and Veolia, or uh, or businesses, um, so that is a uh, is a really good uh, asset. 
and uh, and again I'm, I'm sure we can build on it but it's a good it's a good starting place um now we have just recently um a further comment i don't know who this is from but about the waste food caddy um and and again i certainly remember we we all well, those of us being around the district will remember that, that the council did have a food waste caddy um a long time ago but this uh, this uh, comment I, I don't know who is it from um as it, it, the the resident said it suffers from the same issue as a previous attempt uh, which is the focal point it attracts for flies and it's unhygienic and smelly and the biodegradable bag degrades um especially if the waste food is damp um and it's unhygienic the outdoor food waste bin is lightweight and gets blown around the garden when the bin is um, placed for collection, it can the, it can blow over in strong wind. So that's a very good point. Uh, oh, those are very good points, and and thank you. Um, and and absolutely, they're they're quite right. I'm afraid that is that is part of the 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 annoyance of life. Um, I, I don't want to di dismiss this comment, but I would suggest um, firstly put a weight on the outside bin, and um, when things start to get um uh, smelly maybe in the in the summer when when as we know sort of uh, food lots more flies maybe put food out more quickly outdoors and make sure it's well um well uh, protected against wind and and animals trying to trying to get at what's inside so yeah, absolutely we 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 still all have to cope with the annoyances of 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 nature and and uh, and and uh, looking after food um but uh the going on from the above this this uh, this person has has applauded the intention to collect food waste um so and um, but there must be a better way to do so i'd love it if there was a better way to do so um thank you for the, your your enthusiasm and, and again i really do hope uh, that as kofi has said we the, the, the great majority of us can and will um make uh, better use of this and and actually recycle more of more of our food in particular um I'm, I'm certainly would be very keen to know if there are any better ways, starting from the household, where um, where we could avoid these problems. I can't think of them right now, but please do drop us a line if if you do have them. Um, yes, so over, over to you from Lee. Yes, yes. Just to uh, quickly echo your thoughts uh, on the last question and to say that the approach we are using meets current best practice. So this is a tried and tested collection approach for food waste. And I happen to live in an area that has had a separate food waste service in the past 12 to 18 months or so, and it's going very well. So just to say, please give the service a chance and you will be pleasantly surprised. The caddies have lockable lid, which prevents it, even if it's wind blown, the contents are unlikely to be thrown about. And also that helps to uh, discourage entry by foxes and vermin. So uh, lots of uh, positivity there, and we know the service will really deliver on the objectives. Um, Lee asks how to get replacement uh, curbside caddy bags. Um, assuming they are talking about the uh, containers, um, hopefully, uh, you haven't already um, ha misplaced your caddy or had it broken ahead of the service. But if so, um, we ask that you kindly bear with us because, as I said before, it's a new service and we are putting the focus of our resources to making sure it gets off the ground and works well. Uh, we will not be um, doing a lot of replacement of containers until the end of November, where people can go onto our website and ask for um, caddies. But in the interim, if yours was uh, delivered in a faulty state, then by all means, please reach out to us and we will make sure you get a replacement caddy ahead of the service start. Thank you. Mm. Um, and, and if I could add here uh, to, again to Lee, I think if, if you were asking about caddy bags, in other words, the, the biodegradable bags we've given, we've given every household a free roll of bags, but I'm afraid we can't afford to supply everybody with biodegradable bags for life. I'm afraid it's one of those household things that, that, that uh, really like washing up liquid and, and normal bin bags. I'm afraid 
we're, we're all going to have to 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 buy our uh, replacements um, if uh, if we want to carry on using them. As Kofi mentioned, you can put food waste straight into uh, either your indoor or outdoor um, uh, caddy and wash it out at the end of the week. That's absolutely fine. But I'm afraid again, um, times are hard, and, and we cannot afford free bags for everybody for life. Um, then uh, Chris has asked, why do you only allow a full range of hard plastics to be taken to your recycling centres, but only have a very limited hard plastic range for the home consumer collections? And just to, if I could perhaps uh, reinterpret that, so we, we collect a full range of pots, tubs and trays of hard plastics at our mini recycling centres. As, as Kofi said, we have a, a network of eight of those around the district, and we only collect uh, plastic bottles from the curbside. And the reason is that um, the firstly, the, the market, the, the disposability of um, bottles is much better than other types of plastic where we have we have and we have for a long time have had a, a good market where we can sell crushed bottles to uh, consumer goods uh, manufacturers who turn them into more plastic bottles. Um, but the the recycling of uh, the much more mixed uh, collections, which we've recently started over the last 18 months, two years, um, is, is, is a bit harder. And indeed, it may not always be, I hope it will be, but it may not always have a good market behind it. So I'm afraid just in terms of the size, if you've seen those big skips uh, around the district, if you live near to those, if you can imagine all of that material going into bags, Firstly, I don't think all of it would go into bags. A lot of it would end up again in the black bin. And uh, secondly, I'm, I'm afraid we 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 just couldn't uh, we couldn't sell um, a mixture of pots and tubs and trays in in green bags and be certain that um, our, our system would carry on working. So it's a reasonable compromise. I'm afraid. I'm, I'm sorry. It's not everything from from the curbside, but it's down to the market and the quality, uh, which is much higher for bottles. Thank you, Steve. Um, so I've been alerted by the moderator that this is our final question for the day. Uh, just to say thank you to everyone for your varied and excellent questions. If we haven't been able to address any question this evening, uh, we will look to pick them up via email or letters and respond to you individually and also put things on our website to help residents. But thanks again for all your questions. So to come Thank to you. the question, it is saying, what is the destination for food waste? Um, the answer is that the food waste will be going to our Padworth in-vessel composting facility, where together with the garden waste we collect will be turned into a very good quality soil improver, which is then used on local farmland and also by uh, horticulturists. And people may uh, recollect that um, this past spring, we organized a soil composter free uh, giveaway event, which was very popular and well attended by all residents. That is again, another outlet for this material. And we aim to do even more of such um, things going forward. And if there's the opportunity to even do it on an ongoing basis at our, our recycling centers. We will look into and make sure that happens. And it, in a small way, we help people to keep their gardens looking beautiful and also uh, making sure our district is in bloom uh, when it comes to the spring and summer. Uh, so please um, look out for further announcements about uh, free uh, soil conditioner giveaways. And with that, thank you again. I'm happy to hand over to, to you, Steve, for your closing remarks. Oh, uh, thank you, Kofi. You've, you've taken the words out of my mouth. Uh, thank you, everybody, for some really interesting questions. I, I really do enjoy being put on the spot with some of these, and it's it's always a good refresher. Um, yes, indeed, it's a, it's a, this is a, a big and, and ch regularly changing world. So um, again, I really appreciate, in particular, the people who've offered to, to, to help us and, and the team improve how we communicate with people. Um, one point uh, I'm conscious of, we, we, we maybe didn't mention as, as much as we could have, is that um, 
in terms of habits and people and um, improving our, or reducing our impact on the environment, um, we, the council, cannot, uh, we, we can only do a little bit here. The great majority of the work has to be done by residents. And I think, I guess, uh, everybody here today, uh, you, you, you've shown your interest and we really appreciate it. Uh, a really important thing is to reach out to maybe your neighbours or friends and make, for example, more recycling and using food recycling the normal behaviour. Um, so please, please let, let, let's all try to, to, to make this grow and make, uh, uh, make our impacts on the environment uh, smaller by doing more recycling and, and thinking about uh, the impact of us on the environment. But again, thank you very much for coming. It's been great doing it and um, we'll be in touch. All the best. Bye-bye.